Hi everyone, welcome back. Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming. Today I'm going to be showing you a complete walkthrough for Chapter 4 on Insane Difficulty in the popular survival horror game Dead Space. This is in pursuit of obtaining the epic Tier 3 Engineer achievement, which is to beat the entire game on the impossible difficulty setting. Now as we start out, uh, we are going to basically raid this room as we listen to a cutscene or an audio cutscene, um, we are going to find a couple of wall lockers and an item in that little glassed in area. Um, a couple of quick tips if this is the first video in the series that you've watched. I am not going to be going over basic things like how to fire, how to use a locator, and stuff like that. I'm going to assume if you're on impossible difficulty, then you've beaten the game at least one time. Um, so basically I'm going to be going over combat tips, tricks, and letting you know when and where to expect big fights. Uh, any part where I am not in combat or doing something that I don't deem important enough to really slow down the video to talk about, I will speed up the footage some just so you don't have to see me walking around and backtracking and listening to cutscenes that you're going to listen to yourself. Uh, so that's why the video is moving so quickly right now. So, as you can see, we got into that big atrium and we go went all around the outside of the room and opened up all the boxes, checked all the platforms because there's a lot of good loot to be had there. Uh, quite a bit of ammo, some health packs, and some credits. Uh, after you take the elevator down and get into the captain's nest, make sure you check the walls for a couple more wall lockers and grab any items or supplies that are in there. Once you have your conversation, come back up the elevator, we're gonna have our first run in with a brute. Now, the way that I'm doing this is uh, the more difficult way where I'm just trying to shoot the open spots on his armor. The smart way to play this is use your stasis. Um, I only had one shot and I used it there which wasn't great. But ideally what you'd like to do is once he runs by you stasis him so he slows down and then shoot him in the back or better yet wait until he hunkers down and goes into a sort of like armored ball. Stasis him, run around behind him and then unload on his back because that is his weak point. Uh, it is possible to cut off his arms and legs, but it is rather difficult, and at the back of his body takes a good amount of damage, so you don't need to aim for one specific weak point over the others. Um, a couple of things to add if this is your first video that you're seeing. Uh, I have the pulse rifle and the plasma cutter as my only weapons, so those are the only two weapons I'll be using for the impossible playthrough. Uh, as a rule, I always try to keep at least two full stacks of ammo on me for each one of my weapons, meaning uh, two stacks of 25 for the plasma cutter or two stacks of 100 ammo for the pulse rifle. And I alternate between my two guns so I can make sure I have a healthy supply of ammo for the unused gun being built up. Uh, I always keep two or three health packs on me, and the rest I always throw into the safe at a store. That gives you a good safety net in case you get hurt and have to backtrack for some health packs. Uh, real quick, after you kill the brute, make sure you grab the conductor that he drops, and as you head into this room with the bench, um, make sure you grab the power node on the wall. And speaking of power nodes, another rule that I always follow is you always have one power node on you. There are a lot of rooms as you play through the game that you need power nodes to unlock. I call them safe rooms or supply rooms and they're usually worth sacrificing the one upgrade you could possibly do to a weapon for the amount of goodies you would get out of that room. So after you have defeated the brute, after you've upgraded your weapons and scoured the area for supplies, visited the store if you've had to visit the store, we go into the elevator, we go up. Uh, the room that you come out in is going to have a wall safe and a couple of boxes on the ground. Come out the door and turn left, you'll find a schematic on the floor and a door that you can go through straight ahead. When you go through on your left, you'll see a pile of bodies, and give it a shot because one of those is a live necromorph. Uh, take him out as however you feel safe doing it. You can either shoot him, stasis him, and melee him to death, whatever you want to do. Behind him, there is a stasis recharge station along with a couple of uh, supply boxes, one on the wall, one on the floor. Make sure you grab that stasis. As you can see right now, I am out, so I am very happy to have that. Uh, and grab this one wall box that was directly across from the door before you leave. As you exit, turn right, then turn right again, and we're going to continue heading forward towards the uh, power relays that we need to redirect to the ADS cannon. You're going to come into this room that has some weird, like, 
script or scribing, um, rolling up some some wall sections, and you're going to see this is our first run-in with broken gravity panels. Now, as you can see, that lurker just got launched into the ceiling and splattered. That will happen to you if you touch these panels, so don't touch the panels. You can, as you see me do here, knock enemies into the panels and save a little bit of ammo by letting them uh, be killed by the gravity, or the reverse gravity itself. Uh, this lurker really didn't want to do that, so I had to kill him the old-fashioned way with bullets. And once you take out the lurker and the necromorph, continue to advance very carefully, making your way between the gravity panels until you get to this little open area. Um, it's very little. You'll actually see that a necromorph comes in the door behind you, or drops in by the door behind you. And you get a couple of options. You can kind of wait for him to come to you, or you can meet him. Um, on the other side of that wall, there are two lurkers who are waiting to attack you, so I choose to double back on myself and take out this one uh, standard necromorph. That way I don't have enemies on both sides. Again, he's just one necromorph by himself. Definitely easy to kill. Um, he's playing possum there. I took out his legs and he, he didn't quite die, but he was acting like he was dead, so... If you ever think that, hmm, that Necromorph went down way too easy, pop him with a few more shots and see if he tries to get back up. It'll save you from getting hurt by getting in close looking for loot. So like I said, you come around this corner and you're going to see two of the, uh, I don't know what they're called, lurkers, leapers, the, um, whatever they are. So just, you can use stasis if you want to slow them down because there is another stasis recharge station directly ahead of you. Uh, take out their tentacles once they're opened up, easy enough. Not the first time you've seen these things, I'm sure. So make sure you just pick up any loot they drop and hit this stasis recharge station. And then use your kinesis to move these, I don't know what they are, carts maybe, uh, trolleys out of the way. And get ready to face off against brute number two. Now this time we have much less room to work with. And I actually kind of forgot that you fight the brute here during this playthrough because I come very close right there to getting smashed like I don't understand how I did not get hit there but again we're just gonna use the same tactics I have more stasis this time so I'm gonna be a little more liberal with my use of it as you can see he went into his defensive ball here so I hit him with some stasis to slow him down went to work on his right arm with my plasma cutter and I eventually cut his arm off which you'll see right here I believe there it is now, I thought he was dead because I thought I saw an item fall off of him, but he got back up. And uh, at this point, he has a big, open, gaping wound on his left side, or his right, your left side. So, you could abuse that as there's no armor left there. Uh, but again, he went into his armored ball mode, so I just decided to hit him with another blast of stasis to slow him down. Come around the other side and lay into his left arm. And uh, that took care of him. I actually cut off both arms. So, the nice thing about the Brutes is that once you know how to fight them, they're actually really easy to kill. And they usually drop either semiconductors or power nodes, both of which are great to get. Uh, when you get up to this point, don't do what I just did and only hit one of the flailing electrical... I call them tentacles, but they're just cables. Don't hit only one of those with your stasis, because it throws off the pattern for the flailing. And I actually got frustrated because I couldn't find a time where both cables were on the left. So I went back I went back a little bit hoping that it would reset the pattern, but it didn't. Um, so just take your time. As you can see, eventually you will have a chance to stasis both of the cables on the left-hand side so you can run in to the right and uh, activate that panel. At this point, we're going to backtrack all the way back to the elevator. Um, as we come around the corner near the door that we went through on our way to the panel, You'll have one Necromorph on the ground in front of you. Take him out quickly because a second Necromorph drops in from a vent behind you. Uh, nothing special about these guys. They're just two standard Necromorphs. Take him out with whatever weapons you have and check their bodies for anything that is lootable. Next, we're going to go back to the elevator, ride it back down to the big atrium, and just get yourself geared up on this nice elevator ride for another firefight because we are going to have a bunch of pouncers coming in at us. And when you come out of the door, basically you're going to head right into the door, or this is what I did for my tactic, head into the door that the brute came out of, and just wait. And you're going to see these two-legged wall-crawling pouncers 
charge at you. They have a very hard time getting through this door, so they kind of stack up, and they don't really hit you. Um, if you filled your stasis after getting that first switch, you can use stasis blasts to, right at the door to sometimes get two of them at once and uh, save a little bit of stasis for the rest of them. I had one that was, I don't know, glitched out. Well, as you can see, that was a little bit of a glitch right there. Um, but that lurker, or that pouncer was glitched out on that back wall, so had to shoot him a few times to get his attention. But so he came running, um, and they're gonna come at you in ones and twos as long as you stay in this room. I've never had more than two of them come at me at once. So as long as you stay here and are patient, uh, that was the third one that I killed. I think there's a total of six in this room. So you can see I'm waiting, here comes the fourth one. Hit him with another little blast of stasis, try to hit his arm. And there we go, he's dead. And that's about all you gotta do, just walk, rinse and repeat until you feel they're all dead. Once they are all dead, which they're not yet, that's the fifth one, so it's five that there are that you have to take out. So once you take out all five of them, you can go visit the workbench if you want, as you did pick up that one power node from the Brute. Um, if you do not want to, then follow your waypoint indicator to the elevator. I go down first to level one. I don't think it matters, but I've always traditionally gone with level one instead of level three first, so that's what I'm doing here. When you get off the elevator, you're going to see a save point and a couple of boxes that you can use for loot. Walk out the door, and all of a sudden, boom, the door is ripped off into space. Look out through that new hole in the wall, and you'll see that there's a medium med pack on the ground that you can grab with your kinesis. Head through the door straight ahead, uh, recharge your oxygen because this room is still sealed. There's a workbench in here and a few lockers and wall boxes with goodies. Head out of that room, hang a right, and then we're going to come to this room here. This room has uh, three or four, right at the beginning, three or four necromorphs. And they're the upgraded or the elite necromorphs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, when I first played the game, I called them badass necromorphs because they took so much more damage and did so much more damage. But basically all you want to do is shoot at their legs, slow them down. Uh, if you're using the false rifle like I am, it has a high enough rate of fire that you can keep all of them at bay without them getting too close. And just once their legs are taken out and they're on the ground, pick them off, pick their arms off just one at a time, and you still should have plenty of room to work. Alright, so once you check these bodies for any loot, whether it's credits or ammo or whatever, we're going to go to the right of the door that we just came in, and this is going to bring you into a room with a text log and a wall box, but more importantly, another door that leads you to kind of a mini loot room. There's a power node on the wall, there's a couple of boxes on the ground, but that power node is really what we're, what we're after here, so make sure you grab that. Then we're going to backtrack to the big room where we had our encounter just a moment ago. Hang a left and then go straight ahead. There's only one wall box in here. And uh, I find it a little suspicious that there's only one wall box, but that's really all there is in that room. So head back out. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, there are gravity panels on the ground that are malfunctioning. So do be careful. Um, and as we head into the main room, look up. You're going to see some bodies hanging on the or from the ceiling go ahead and pick off their arms and legs and basically dismember them now this isn't just for fun basically what's going to happen is after we complete this room when we backtrack through it a reanimator is going to come in and any bodies that you don't dismember he will well he'll reanimate them and make them into an enemy again as you can see, I foolishly ignored the enemies or the dead bodies that were on the ground, and that will come back to haunt me later, as you will see in the video in just a few minutes. And here is one of those rooms that I was talking about, one of the safe rooms or the supply rooms. There cost a power note to get in, but there is a lot of ammo on the ground, there are med packs, and all sorts of awesome stuff that's definitely worth sacrificing one power note for. So once you raid that room, head back out, very carefully, very carefully, pick your way around the malfunctioning gravity panels. No need to come up on this little platform, I just did because I was curious if there was anything up there, and turns out there wasn't. So, <clears throat> continue to advance, there's only one path that you can take. 
avoid these panels again and then on the left you're going to have a lurker that is going to kind of be running around on the left hand side dispose of him any way that you see fit sometimes you can get him to just jump right into the gravity panel and you don't even have to do a thing but this time i was not so lucky so he soaks up quite a few bullets from the pulse rifle before he finally dies but in return he dropped a little bit of pulse ammo for me very thankful for that there's the panel that we have to activate to complete this room uh, there's a small med pack on the ground if you need it, so hit the switch, activate the console, and you are ready to start backtracking once again. As we pick our way through the gravity panels back towards the door, you're going to see that you come out to the area where the dead bodies are hanging, and sure enough, there's our reanimator causing me problems by making enemies out of those dead bodies. So. I hit him with a stasis blast, uh, and whenever you see one of these reanimators, the first thing you want to do is take him out of commission. So what I did was, yes, I used some stasis on the necromorph on the ground, but once he was slowed down or frozen, I just laid into that reanimator to make sure that he didn't make any more trouble for me than absolutely necessary. Once he's dead, just go about your business of taking apart the necromorphs one bit at a time. As you can see from that little... Uh, inventory check. I have quite a few med packs on me, so I'm going to be making a pit stop. Um, I'm going to actually go up to floor 3 first, but I'm going to end up turning around and going back to the store to drop off some of this stuff. I'm doing an ammo check right now. I see that I have plenty of plasma cutter ammo and med packs, but not a whole lot in the way of pulse ammo. So I grab the stuff off of the elevator. Again, we took the elevator all the way up to the third floor. I drop the schematics here um, because I'm trying to make room for any additional loot that I might pick up. And when you come down this hallway, there's going to be a what I call a carrier form, the fat guys that have the little flipper swarms inside of them, and a necromorph elite. Again, I'm switching to my pu uh, plasma cutter here because I have a lot of plasma cutter ammo and almost no pulse rifle ammo. These carrier forms, as I'm sure you know by now, you want to make sure you do not shoot them in the belly because that will unleash a flipper swarm and those things are very annoying on impossible difficulty. So shoot them in the arm, shoot them in the legs, take them out, take out this necromorph and then go ahead, go ahead and loot their body for anything that is useful. Uh, there's a few wall boxes in this hallway and a save point if you need it. And at this point, you can see I am actually backtracking down to the second floor, which is the big atrium where we fought the first brute. Um, and I'm backtracking towards the beginning of the level here to visit the store, dropping all of my schematics, moving a bunch of my uh, med packs over and my extra ammo to free up some room in my inventory. And I even sold a few of the med packs because I was comfortable enough with how many I had in reserve. I grabbed a couple more power nodes from the store, so I'm going to make another pit stop at the workbench. Uh, I'm checking to make sure that I have air upgrades on my rig because I need to do a big spacewalk in a moment. And I am upgrading my plasma cutter right now because that is my primary weapon that I have ammo for. So, taking those damage upgrades, the reload speeds, and the uh, firing speed, or no, another reload. But again, that's all personal preference. However you feel like upgrading your weapons is your call. Uh, I'm going to hit the save checkpoint because I know that that space walk is coming up and it's very easy to get uh, killed. Very easily to get very quickly killed. And we don't want that. So, making sure that I got everything straightened out before I head back up. Making sure my inventory looked good, everything looked good. So I'm heading back up to floor 3, or level 3 and we are going to be heading towards the ADS cannon and doing everybody's favorite part of this game the asteroid defense portion so activate this switch by the door and you'll get notified that hey you got all three switches but something's wrong and I need you to go do something else go through the door right next to the panel and you'll be in a kind of weird looking hallway on the right hand side that you just saw me go into is a door that has a few more supplies. At the end of the hallway is an elevator that brings you up to the external part of the ship. Go out through the airlock, grab the air can if you feel you're gonna need it, but if you were like me and took a couple of uh, air upgrades, or at least one air upgrade, you won't need it. When you get to this part, this can be a little intimidating because there's a lot of stuff exploding. But what you wanna do is you can basically go two, um, I don't know what these are, cooling units or something, two at a time and you'll see some explosions, you'll see the debris start coming in, hide, and then as soon as it clears, 
book it. You can make it, you can do this in three, uh, three stops, so you should have plenty of air. Once you get into this part, run far enough back so the door seals up and the air comes back into the room so your air meter resets, and then save. Grab the stuff, but don't get in the chair, and save before you sit in this chair. Now, I've done a video um, that is on our channel about how to unlock the achievement that is tied to this, this portion, which is called Don't Get Cocky Kid, which is to complete this section of the game with at least 50% shields remaining. I will tell you right now, spoiler warning, I do not complete this run with 50% shields, but I'm going to give you a few tips right now as I play through this. First tip is turn the brightness on your TV or monitor all the way up. That way you can see the asteroids from further back and start shooting at them sooner. The second tip I have is do not just lay on the trigger and fire continuously because these guns do overheat. Both the left and the right barrel have an independent heat gauge, so what I usually do is either alternate firing left and right with single, tr single trigger pulls, or I will use the left for a few shots, then the right, and vice versa. Um, the next bit of advice I have is make sure that you hit the you shoot the big asteroids with both barrels because when you shoot one of the big asteroids it breaks into four smaller asteroids and it can do a lot of damage by using both barrels it'll wipe out all the little parts and you won't have anything left to worry about um, the fifth I think it's the fifth piece of advice I have is don't panic like at the end of this run you're gonna see me freak out a little bit because I get down to like 30 odd percent health but you have to be okay with the fact that you're going to take a few hits from the asteroids and you can't freak out and just try to hit every single asteroid and leave yourself exposed where you'll you'll basically let three asteroids get through because one closer asteroid needs to be shot at. So as you can see like I'm letting some on the left go by right now because I'm trying to hit the asteroids on the right. Um, you need to be okay with that happening. Know that you're, you are going to take damage. This is a difficult portion. Don't freak out, and like most importantly, if you're struggling and you've tried this a bunch of times, take a break. Put down the controller, pause the game, walk away, clear your head for 10-15 minutes, and then come back and try again. You'll see it'll probably make all the difference in the world. Anyway, so once you get through that annoying ADS cannon section of the game, uh, you're going to be backtracking again. A couple of lurkers pop up out of the vents. I had a little bit of fun here because this is the first time I realized that this area is zero gravity so I could jump to the walls. So I was just experimenting with that a little bit. But continue to backtrack. Um, there's really not a whole lot left going on at this point. We're going to go back down to the main atrium uh, where we fought the brute and all those uh, jumpers. I just I forgot that I'd already cleared that room so I was checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. When you do come into this room with the elevator, you're going to see, I don't know what their proper names are, I call them like head snakes, um, or tentacle heads. They have, it's a skull with a bunch of little tentacles crawling around underneath it. And they have these appendages that kind of jump at you. Be careful, give these things room. They are small, but they are annoyingly fast and deceptively damaging. But they're also very easy to kill if you can get a shot on them. So once you've taken out the, uh, the appendages and the head, take the elevator back down to the main atrium and you're going to backtrack to the store, uh, sell off what you don't need for ammo or extra med packs or credits, buy what you do need for ammo or power nodes or med packs maybe, um, <clears throat> and then make sure you store whatever you do want to keep or whatever you want to hold on to. Um, I am backtracking one more time to the workbench because I don't know in the next chapter how soon or how late in the chapter I would get a workbench and I didn't want to risk not having an upgraded weapon for the next chapter. So as you can see I'm pondering what I want to upgrade but again that's totally personal. It's totally up to you however your play style is. As you head back to the tram you are going to get jumped by two more enemies. Some uh, venom spitting necromorphs. So there's going to be one in front of you, take them out as quick as you can and then turn around because one is dropping behind you right by the store. If you get too close to these ones they will actually spit like a poison venom at you that will damage you quite a bit. So try to take them out quickly. 
Um, I'm going back here because I picked up a couple more things and I wanted to clear out my inventory. But that's about it. Go onto the tram, hit the switch, and congratulations, you're done with Chapter 4. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day everyone.